Okay, so Tommy, yeah. have you actually jotted down any of the uh, holidays we're having this year? Of course, you would know the holidays, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, but uh, you know, uh, there, there are like uh, five uh, places mm. of my list to go with mm. my family, and three of them actually I still want to go to the beach mm-hmm. area or maybe up to the hill. Mm-hmm. Or how about you? Um, well, there's actually a perfect place to go with your family, which mm. is actually camping. I thought yeah. about it a lot of the times when it comes to camping, mm. but yet, of course, you know, bringing a child along and mm. you know, me being a lady who's like. So lady and child friendly, that's what you're that seeking. That is what okay. I'm seeking and I think a lot of <laughs> a, a lot of ladies out there also do feel the same way. Now there's mm. several great opportunities for uh, for a getaway from the crazy craziness of Jakarta, yes. especially mm. with the increasing collections <laughs> of resorts out of town offering a break from the city. And we mentioned one of them is like the uh, camping, right? Yes, camping. But again, you know, we have a lot of issues in where I'm afraid of insects and then my children they're afraid the children will fall over the hill or something like that. <laughs> So if you like Katya <laughs> and prefer comfort over roughing it in, in nature, then glamping is for you. Yes. So with the need of natural beauty, a retreat in nature sometimes is just what we need to refresh. That's true. Now here in our studio today is Kunal T, the owner of Pizara Resort at Taktawai in Lembang, West Java. Hello. Yes. Hi, how are you? Wow, thank you for being here. Yes. You're welcome. So from Lembang to Jakarta, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not very far. Yeah, yeah, it's not. <laughs> about just now how camping, right? Like a lot of people actually do like camping. Some boys, men like camping. A lot of men. That's yeah. right. But for women like me though, yes. <laughs> who are afraid of insects, well, insects just don't like me in general. No. <laughs> how do you actually go camping? Well, when we were building the place, mm-hmm. of course I had next to me was my wife. She mm-hmm. said, the bathroom needs to be good. No insects. and has to be clean. Mm-hmm. So those are the three main things that we focus on. And um, as we went, as we progressed from what was just going to be a, a standard mm-hmm. campsite, we decided let's take it up now, take it up now, mm-hmm. take it up now. So and the result was Pizarra. Mm-hmm. Sure. So uh, but by saying taking up notch mm-hmm. means it, in mm-hmm. terms of comfort or in, in terms, terms of exciting word. And then oh, we luxury. said, okay, but there has to be good food. Okay. Oh, okay. but there has to be good service. Mm-hmm. Oh, but you know, I want I'm going to be lazing around my tent, and I need somebody to send me room room uh, room service. Mm-hmm. Or you know, I don't want to give uh, other people uh, on the phone, or I don't want to hear this, or, you know, we had all those, that, that checklist drew longer and longer and longer and longer. Mm-hmm. So then, um, oh, but I need hot water, and uh, I, need, I need this to be really comfortable. Mm-hmm. So, I can't live here otherwise. Mm-hmm. I can't stay here. I can't help out here. So, that was actually part of the, you know, the step-by-step phase mm-hmm. until we got to, you know, truly glamping. Mm-hmm. So, uh, by saying, uh, by answering those questions from yeah. those perspectives, how did you actually uh, find uh, the, the right place for those type of, you know, fit? Oh, it's not very easy because, see, either you go out too far and it's hard to access the place. Yeah. And you know how infrastructure in Indonesia is. Not, mm-hmm. not everything is perfect. Mm-hmm. So, or there's also certain places where the weather doesn't accommodate mm-hmm. you very well. And, um, and, uh, and, and the people around you have to support you too. So, you have to help give and, and make it back as well. So. Mm-hmm. It's really important that you find the right ingredient to, for the right place. Mm-hmm. So, of course, we backpacked throughout, stayed a night there, understood what it's like to actually stay there, mm-hmm. see what the sounds are like of nature, mm-hmm. is it calling for us or not, and then we made that decision. Mm-hmm. We said, okay, let's park here, let's build. Mm-hmm. Let's so how was the infrastructure back then? Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> what was, what was available back then? No. Um, I mean... You know, you have minor roads, you have two villages, and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the, the government has not focused exactly in those regions. But, of course, now, with working together with them, you have to get the message across, you have to explain the importance, and then finally they get it, and then finally they help you out. Mm-hmm. So, the people also, the people that get that started to come, mm-hmm. they started complaining, and they took to Twitter themselves. And they, the power of the masses, mm-hmm. basically, once yeah. they started complaining, the government made a uh, decision to move on. Was it hard for you to make a, let's say, a more glamour, luxury, comfort camping place, but not losing the essence of camping? Oh, the essence of nature, the right? Nature, very exactly. tricky, very tricky. Um, you know, that feeling, first of all, it's a tent, mm-hmm. right? But it's a luxury tent, so it's got proper roofing, it's got the five layers, so it doesn't, it's not too hot, not too cold, mm-hmm. and also it really feels luxurious where you have your own proper windows, you have, you can actually stand around, move around, you have mm-hmm. a porch that's also perfect. Where now the feet, the, the tent, because it's a tent, you hear all the birds chirping outside. Okay. You hear, uh, you know, um, everything that's going on right around you. And there is no way, you, you, you're still in nature no matter what. You're just, you're a tent away from outdoor. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you can hold that tent and you can see outdoor if you really want to. Um, and with, if you do, uh, if you're staying in a villa or a 
solid building. Mm. You shut the door, it's complete silence. Mm. So you're not, you're not in me. So it is still the infrastructure that matters. Yeah, that you're trying matters, to keep this whole um, nature, atmosphere, and ambience. Very much. So mm. how did you learn all this? Mm. I mean, basically to build, to enhance the camping level into glamping. Mm. How did you learn? You know, um, let me share with you who my teacher is. Mm. If you do have a phone on you, if you have a phone on you, you know him very well. Yeah. It's called Uncle Google. <laughs> <laughs> See? So, so once, you, once you start understanding what people want, you start reading responses, um, you start reading what's going on out there. Like, uh, what are people looking for? And what is the new thing? Mm-hmm. Or, like, have you noticed everyone's always selfie crazy today? Yeah. They're taking a picture of something they've never seen, or mm-hmm. they're posting it, and then they get, they're looking, looking forward to how many comments and mm-hmm. likes. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. we said, you know what, this is, this is a new era. Uh, we're living in the age where the millennials are going to take over. Okay. So what do they want? And um, and it's not only because, you know it's not a result of not only glam it's not mm-hmm. because of it's because of everything else. What do we cater to mm-hmm. the next the next generation? And of course, glamping was is one of those lists, one of those things on the bucket list mm-hmm. of most of us. Mm-hmm. So these are the people you need to cater: millennials, yes, yeah. family, family. So what aspect do you have? Yeah, for example, in glamping, yes. other than nature, mm-hmm. or maybe the luxury level in it. Yeah. So what else? What else? Okay. So a lot of people say this, oh, if I go camping, if I go out in the forest, what will I do? Mm-hmm. So of course, we have to be creative, and we have to think, we have to provide everything a standard hotel does not provide. Mm-hmm. So um, we said, okay, let's go with ATVs. Okay, let's go with forward driving. Let's go with hiking. Let's go with rope sports. Let's go with flying fox, mm-hmm. a zip line. And we added on list just grew, 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 grew. And of course, our guests would come up to us and say, you know, do you have an alcohol? <laughs> you know, I haven't played an in a while. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I haven't played Twister. Mm-hmm. I used to play Twister, but I'm, my kid hasn't played Twister. He's only mm-hmm. played everything on his iPad. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We need yeah. to change this up. How do we do this? Mm-hmm. So we said, okay, fine. Let's get all the Monopoly boards. Let's get all the card games. Let's get, a, let's get a Uno and let's mm-hmm. get Jenga and let's get everything out there. So, of course, that's all inclusive. You come there, and all those games are there at your disposal. We don't even have a guitar. Mm-hmm. So, we have a guitar. So, when you're at the bond, <coughs> you want to play with the guitar. Mm-hmm. You have a guitar, too. It's already tuned mm-hmm. as well. Because our front desk boys know how to tune the guitar. So, by the time you bring it down, you don't have to set it all up again. Mm-hmm. It's all ready. So, those are the little things. I mean, along the way, it's all about listening to what your, your guests say, and mm-hmm. what your friends say. And, uh, and that's how we just slowly tweak it. And no higher technology in it. That's and right. TV in the past, no right? TV. No TV. Are you able to do that, yeah. Tommy? Yeah. Yeah. I am. But can I ask you, when, when you go for a trip with your kids, <laughs> do they all do they run in the room and turn on the television? Exactly. That's what happened yeah. with my kids. And I always said, no <laughs> TV. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go out and swim. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> so when, after we finished building the space, we, we, we walked in and you know, we, we observed what would the family, what would happen when the family walked in. Mm. And then the kids, they open up the room and they go, wow. And they look around and they're like, where's the television? No TV. <laughs> and they're like, okay, don't worry, I'll figure it out. And then they run around outside and we know this. They start That's enjoying. Right. Exploring. Exploring. They try to find out yeah. if they right. Okay, let's talk more after the short break. We'll yes. come back. Don't go anywhere. The Sumatran rhino is the world's smallest rhino. It stands just 1.5 meters tall and stretches 2.5 meters long, weighing at one ton. Compared to the Javan rhino standing 2 meters, stretching 4 meters and weighing 1.5 tons. What's unique about it is that baby Sumatran rhinos are covered in fur. And they have two different horns with the front horn taller than the one behind it. The population to date leaves just 300 living in the wild.
Our New Center in Jakarta, Indonesia. We bring you stories from Indonesia and around the world. With insights and perspectives from global leaders and decision makers. We provide a closer look at what's driving the global economy. Wherever the news breaks, whatever it takes. And we share our vision to the world. MNC World News, Indonesia and beyond. Who is the biggest influence? Don't miss it, racing the bar. Welcome back, and you know, before we continue our discussion here, you know, what was hap what just happened with Yao? Mm. There was silent disco. There was silent disco, exactly. <laughs> That's you know. a new trend. We are new reducing trend. noise pollution. Yes. That's what we're doing right here. So really just good, for right? two really minutes. Great. Yeah. yeah. So it's better really than nothing. <laughs> All right, now, back to glamping. Yes. All right, now. Okay, we know camping has been around for years and years and years from our grandparents, you know, and it was, it's still going on pretty much the same until now. But what about glamping? Do you feel it's a pattern trend right now? Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I think glamping is a, is a trend for those, you know, uh, who always want to try something one time and that's it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But there are, there are those that always run back to nature again to look for that feeling. Okay. So, a trend, yes, for those there are two, two types of people. Mm -hmm. For those who say, okay, I've done this and that's it. Mm -hmm. And there are also those that, I need that feeling, I'm looking for that feeling, I need, I'm going there. Mm -hmm. So that's going to always be there. Um, going back to na nature doesn't get old. Uh, and you're always going to look for it too. And um, you know, when we're living in a city like this, you know, you're always, something you decry for something. Mm -hmm. And based on six months after it launched, yes. um, uh, mm -hmm. what are the biggest markets of your plan? Uh, we have a lot of family, mm -hmm. family groups, corporate groups, we have a lot of couples, honeymooners. It gets quite interesting because don't forget the tent. Yeah. And a honeymooner in a tent. So you everything that we heard outside. Wow. So how does that work? <laughs> I don't know, but they still do come. So do you, you actually place the, you know, the, <laughs> yes. the honeymooners tent far, far 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 away. Away. No, I, I give you the secret. We do have a, a certain tents that are further down the hill, mm -hmm. which are a bit more separate again. Okay. All right. So they're very, very quiet. And, uh, you know, I mean, we have, we have maximum privacy there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we offer those to the honeymoons, mm -hmm. and we have the whole package as well. Mm -hmm. like, you know, when they come in, with the balloon, with this, with the flowers, with this, mm -hmm. and we have a special meal for you, and things like that. So we, have, we offer all those. Those are the things they ask for. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have to provide. Mm -hmm. Right. And you mentioned about your wife uh, in the first mm -hmm. segment, right? Yeah. So you just talk to your wife, maybe. Oh, my God. Um, so we got married. Went for a honeymoon and I took her straight out to the forest. Okay. Mm -hmm. Straight to the forest. Straight to the forest. Mm -hmm. you know? So I, I explained to her the beauty. And then so she, the first thing she said, will I be able to stay here? When it's done, will I be comfortable? Mm -hmm. um, I need a proper bathroom. It has to be a good bathroom too. It has to have a good shower too. It has to have this. Mm -hmm. And it has to have a hairdryer. It has to have this. It has to have a comfortable bed. <laughs> and it has to have you know privacy. Or it has to have the food. Or it has so I'm like, okay, here's a checklist. Mm -hmm. As we go along, mm -hmm. this is becoming glamping. Mm -hmm. You know, it can't be just the standard tents and just uh, erect those tents and, mm -hmm. and you, you, you know, you come with your backpack and that's it. Mm -hmm. And you eat jagung bakar or, you know, like, uh, you know, Indomie. Indomie. You know, <laughs> like, that's <laughs> the standard. <laughs> so, of course, those are the few things that people do look for. Yeah. We do serve all of that, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. So some people come there. People come there with uh, ketchup as well, thinking mm -hmm. we're going camping. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring sour tomat. We're going to bring sambal. <laughs> we're going to bring some food, pork meat, something. They get there and they realize 
trekking. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, I'll show you. Trekking. I'll show you the one experience what happened was um, we had uh, a group come in, mm-hmm. and some of them actually brought their own tent. Right? <coughs> so they stayed in the main tent uh, uh, for, for the most part, mm-hmm. and then in the evening, they set up their main tent. They slept in it for like two hours, mm-hmm. they couldn't take it, and they went back to the bed. So, so the bed was there. So, so <laughs> there's a land to buy it. <laughs> yes, of course, you want to set up well. the All that land is all out there for you guys, mm-hmm. for anybody, mm-hmm. for any guest that walks in. So they, they want to set up there, they want to set up there, so I'll help you with what you need mm-hmm. to set it up. But, but of course, they may not say in a, in a, in a mountain, you yes. know, where there's a lot of trees. And it's different where you're, when you're in a hotel, you have, you know, if you, it's in a compound. Yes. It's covered, you yes. know, and it's mm-hmm. easier for you to get rid of, let's say, mm-hmm. unwanted yeah. bit of yeah. friends, yeah. creatures. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you maintain oh, it's tricky. That's another. Now, I don't so know waking up with a snake. Said, oh, <laughs> how did you get rid of these animals? We mm-hmm. say no, we, didn't, we managed to remove them, relocate them. So, because mm-hmm. we're very good at right? so we have to focus on that. So, we moved them out of our zone and we fenced it up. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a natural fence. Mm-hmm. So, let's do this snake, yeah. okay? Yeah. <laughs> So there, there is a, th- I, I had to study, I remember I went back to Google and I said, how did you get rid of snakes in a garden? Mm-hmm. So I, I went back and couldn't figure it out. They gave me all kinds of chemicals, this, that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's really bad. But they might, so I realized, mm-hmm. let me just ask the locals. Mm-hmm. Because in that region, I'm sure there is a way to do it. Mm-hmm. So they just put salt all oh. around the fence. They put salt all around the fence. And there's nothing else that comes Very to traditional, it. yeah? Very good. Yeah. It's such a simple method. Mm-hmm. And well, it works. It works. It works. It's true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Think mm-hmm. about local. If you employ local there. Yeah. yeah. Local yeah. They, are, they are the heart. Uh, you see, so what we decided to do is rather than bring in people from mm-hmm. across, why don't we just get everyone that's around our area mm-hmm. to help us? Mm-hmm. But of course, remember that the education was very, was very poor at that mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. But we needed to show them something a whole different level. Service industry. Yeah. Uh, because every guest that comes has a request. I want this, I want that, I want this, I want mm-hmm. that. Especially since it's more into luxury and comfort, mm-hmm. right? And we city people are very fussy. We want this, how come it's like that? How mm-hmm. come it's not like this? So how do you uh, how do you handle each guest's request? Mm-hmm. That's always a big challenge. And uh, we managed to teach each and every one through rigorous training. Mm-hmm. And now they are with us and they're very happy. They've learned a whole new world. Mm-hmm. And uh, I honestly think it's actually influenced even their families too. Because whenever I go visit their families mm-hmm. in their houses, I can see the changes from before when they were in construction to before when they were selling coffee and cigarettes. Mm-hmm. Now they're working okay. in a hotel, mm-hmm. they're, let's say, the housekeeping, their own houses. So they implemented it at so home. Yeah. At home too. They shifted their lifestyle. Yes. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. So in terms of education, uh, do you yes. educate the, the customers as well to go back to nature, for oh. example? Do you provide like a rundown of <laughs> activities in, in yeah. your now, without this place, it's very tough because we see all the billboards. It says go green, mm-hmm. it says go, yeah. you know, love nature, save water, save this, save that, mm-hmm. save the animals, mm-hmm. save it. But the thing is, once they are already at Pizarro, they get there, it's very easy to educate mm-hmm. because they understand what you're talking about. It's, they visualize it and experience it. Mm-hmm. So it works both ways. It works to our advantage, actually, and it becomes a breeze to educate. And it's more, more educated to share our mm-hmm. experience. Mm-hmm. Because if we educate somebody, they'll be like, I know everything. Exactly. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. So this, in this case, oh, this is how we feel when we're here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't you feel the same too? Mm-hmm. And they'll be like, okay, that's how I feel too. You're mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. That's right. This is how we should live life. Mm-hmm. Better. Mm-hmm. Better li- live this way. And, you know, we'll say words. We'll say this. I'm aware. Mm-hmm. The awareness that we can like. But we do provide the rundown. Uh, of course. Right? Or mm-hmm. it's optional, basically. No, it's a lot, a lot of, you just have to book in advance. Two or three days before, before you mm-hmm. come, just call up. Say, you know, I want to go forward driving tomorrow, or I want to mm-hmm. uh, do, you know, ropes courses, mm-hmm. or I want to do uh, lots of activities, fun and games, or I want my room set up for a birthday. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you just call us, and, mm-hmm. and it makes it, uh, we can coordinate better on the site. Mm-hmm. You can't, nothing, nothing is done instantaneously, mm-hmm. you know. And now we're in the modern world, and of course, you have a lot of people from the main city going in looking for, you know, yes. nature, but what is the one activity that they actually come to? Is it um, I to chill. To chill, to chill. That's <laughs> the one thing. Enjoy they the show. view. To and chill. Nature, and right? take <laughs> photographs. <laughs> but, Selfie. Uh, but Selfie. You, know, you know, we noticed there, I think out of the 100% of the time, I think 20% of the time is
guys on uh, on uh, uh, chilling. Twenty mm-hmm. percent is taking photographs. Twenty <laughs> percent uh, is hanging by the cafe and and you know mm-hmm. and uh, with hanging out with friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many times have I said twenty? Twenty uh, percent <laughs> is I think uh, playing with fun and games yeah. and activities mm-hmm. and such as archery mm-hmm. and so on. Mm-hmm. We have archery too. And uh, and the rest I think is sleep. So mm-hmm. yeah. So I think and they talk about that. Uh, tell people, right? So yeah. in depth why you have photo booth as well. You have a photo booth, yeah. you know, it's a, a theme concept, something again in different background. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we were creative. I mean we, we drew everything. There was no architect and there was no contractor. Mm-hmm. So we drew everything. My wife looked at me and she's like, you know, that looks good. Mm-hmm. Let's do this. <laughs> you know, let's let's make this. How do you make this? I don't know. Let's refer mm-hmm. to Google again. Let's go, let's go mm-hmm. back, let's see, show the boys how to mm-hmm. do this. Mm-hmm. So we'd sit there and then three, four weeks later it was done. You know, so but you have to be on site. Okay, but I think it is very hard right now to actually make people, um, especially modern people, working people, to actually yeah. um, be one with the nature. I think you know, really just go out and be adventurous, you yeah. know, instead yeah. of just chilling, like you said, right? Yeah. Is, is, is it hard for you really to come up, have to come up with ideas to yeah. actually make the, the, you know, the customers yes. even more I don't educate see, the customers? I don't see them as customers, I see them as guests. I see them as friends yeah. and guests. Yeah. Okay. So it makes it easier also for me to relate with them. Mm-hmm. And, and that, you know, it, and most people see it as, oh, it's a business. Mm-hmm. How do we do this? No, we, we don't see that. We see it, we see it as, what will they enjoy most? Don't worry, we'll walk over. Mm-hmm. And they'll come. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have to always create a message. Um, and every day we cook up something new that's, that's, that's something that they've never seen and they'll appreciate. Mm-hmm. And that's the big challenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we need to approach them differently. Basically. Everybody has yeah. everything. Everybody has a different wish. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Some will say, I want to learn how to ride a bike. But how do you do it? Mm-hmm. So we have actually a, a plaza, mm-hmm. and the kids who are learning a bike, they fall, they get up, they fall, they get up. Because it's a synthetic turf, mm-hmm. when they fall, it doesn't hurt. Mm-hmm. So we have to think of those little things too. Okay, so okay. Uh, which, um, uh, when is the bad season? Yeah, the bad season. <laughs> so. um, two, two types of seasons, right? We have here is uh, summer. Yeah. And the rainy season. Rainy. I like the rainy season. The reason being, okay, this is this is this people will object to this. First of all, when it rains, the smell is yeah. different. Yeah. Your yeah. senses yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. are all activated. Mm-hmm. Your your fog sweeps in. Mm-hmm. Your mist. Your dew in the morning. So those you get all those elements, those characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and also this love, you just feel like it's just always clean and the grass is always greener. Mm-hmm. It's just so much better. But when it comes to summer, of course, yes, you can play outside with mm-hmm. more mm-hmm. And uh, you can enjoy. But it gets a bit warmer, I must say. Mm-hmm. At okay. night time, mm-hmm. 16 degrees, 17 mm-hmm. degrees. Okay. So it gets yeah. a little bit warmer. But some people do prefer summer, some people do prefer rainy season. I am with rain. What about yeah. you? Yeah. Which would you like for? Rainy. Rainy? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. See? I'm so <laughs> To do the off road as well in the crazy yeah, season. Exactly. <laughs> oh, the off road. You go with the car and the water enters yeah, the car. Yeah. And you know, you've seen in those movies mm-hmm. where the water is entering the car, the yeah. mud's entering, you cross a river, 